ladies and vagina infiltrators. Andy here, author of The Best Tinder Guide on the fucking internet. Not just the normal internet, but the fucking internet. And self-proclaimed cult leader. I can't tell you what cult, it's top secret, but this is the kill, you're in a loser show. Let's fucking go, baby. So I just sat down with a guy who's just finished up a 12-week one-on-one coaching program with me. And this guy made a bunch of awesome changes. This was a guy who'd never talked to women before, like in person, that he didn't know, never done any cold approaching or any of that sort of stuff. He ended up having sex with three girls that he'd never met, just girls on the fucking street, including one girl that he met. And he he met her in a bar. They talked for about five minutes and then he took her home and had sex with her. So he, he said he fucked her within like five or 10 minutes of meeting her. So absolute fucking legend there. He did a bunch of sex stuff that he'd never sort of explored before. Came on a girl's face for the first time, tried BDSM for the first time, tried tying her up, learned a bunch of that sort of stuff. And I think probably most, his biggest change was learning how to screen for the type of women that he wanted, figuring out the kind of like personality traits that he wants, the kind of women that he likes, he likes feminine, submissive women, and sort of like aiming for those women, writing a sexual bucket list as well to explore with them. So he made a bunch of different changes. And I want to read out a quote that he said, because I think it sums up his journey, you know, more than anything. I'll be the first person I even talk about it in this uh, podcast that we did this interview we did. He really fucking pushed himself and did a hell of a lot of hard work here. Like he busted his fucking ass. And we're going to go through in this interview and talk about, you know, some of the changes that he made some advice for you guys, how you can do the same. But I want to read out a quote that he said, he said, the last few months have been a mind blowing amount of growth and progress. They totally shattered my perception of what I thought was possible for me in my sex life and have changed the way that I relate to women. So like I said, we're going to give you guys plenty of advice. You can follow in his footsteps, see what he's done. Uh, It's a really great interview. I think you guys are going to love it. Adios. Uh, uh, Yeah, it was totally random, but uh, I was watching this, that comedian Ryan Long, he has this, uh, I, I, he's got this podcast called The Boys Cast, and he's got this yep. video, he was he was reading some article about like, um, I don't know, one of these women's magazines where they're talking about how you need to start pegging your guy, <laughs> and it's just like, it's, Wait, it's real, the funniest it's shit, really in a it's a real article, it's in, really in a magazine, and they're like, put rose petals in the bed, and like, oh, while you're fuck fucking off. him in the, like, while you're fucking him in the butt, like, just like, m- caress him and be like, you're my king, you know, like, I respect you, like, <laughs> It's just like- I feel like if you respect someone, you don't have to respect, you don't have to say, like, imagine if, okay, I feel like this is the, imagine we're right in the middle of having sex with a chick, not we, like uh-huh. you and I are not doing it at the same chick, but like you're off having sex with your chick. I'm off having sex with my chick right in the middle of it. Uh-huh. You're just like, I really respect you. Imagine you say that she's going to be like, whoa, he must fucking not respect me. Like what, what, <laughs> what insane shit is in his head that he has to like reiterate that he respects me. He has to really make like- a point. Yeah, so you're like coming on her face. You're like, I really respect you. I just want you. I want you to know, you know. Let's yeah. talk about the changes you made and the hustle that you made. We did mm-hmm. a 12 week little coaching program, one on one. You and me, we sat down, a pair of good boys, and we decided let's fucking get you laid. Let's let's build something beautiful. Yeah. In that time, you did a hell of a lot, my friend. You did a hell of a lot, and we'll oh, go through it and just read some of them out. Feel free to jump in if you want to like spitball off some of these. But I think the one that stands out is that you fucked three girls. Yep. including two that were you made fuck buddies and then one girl you met in a bar mm-hmm. and you fucked her within like what like 10 minutes of meeting her or something yeah like literally like maybe within five minutes uh and the, the funniest part of that one too was um you know i i was i was with um you know at this bar uh, with a buddy of mine and I was supposed to, I, I was just like all right not, not much is going on tonight I was texting another girl on the app so I was like hey like you want to grab a drink and the other girl's like, yeah, sure. Like it's late, but let's meet up, grab a drink. And, you know, I wanted to do a few approaches today. I was a little short so, or that day. So um, I saw a girl just kind of standing alone, like looking pretty hot and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I, I, I'll say hi to one girl. I like, go over, start chatting with her. Um, we're like, we're kind of just like flirting a bit and stuff. And, you know, uh, I'm just like, oh, I live in this neighborhood. And she's like, oh, you live like over there. Like, I'm not, not I'm not coming all the way there and stuff. And I was like, you know what? It's, it's pretty cool. You should check it out sometime. And she's like, you know what? Maybe tonight. Yeah. Why don't we go? Let's, uh, <laughs> like, I'll, let's check it out right now. I was like, Fuck. all right. Like close the bar tab, like head over and straight back to my place. So it was pretty, uh, pretty nuts. Which is like the perfect example of, of something that I've been talking about with a few clients recently that some girls will just fuck with you because you just are, uh, sorry, they'll fuck you. Yeah. They might fuck with you as well, but they will fuck you just because you asked. 
Like totally. you literally just were the only person that bothered to ask her at that point in time. Do you want to fucking hang out? Do you want to fuck me? Do you want to sit on my face and pee on me and do all sorts of <laughs> evil shit? You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe not all that. Maybe not. You didn't say all that. Fine. You're it's a little, a it's a little, yeah. a little much for the first day. You know, got to warm yeah, up to that. You so. are a gentleman. Uh, but it was, yeah. I mean, the she literally told me, um, you know, when we were kind of in bed together, she's like, I was. I literally went out tonight to meet a guy and like, yeah. I was just, I was just waiting for someone to like go and approach me and stuff. And I was like, oh, and do you know how many times a girl will go out with the intention to have someone hit on her and no yeah. guys will hit on her. And then it's like every single man in that bar at that point in time should put his head between his legs and say, I literally could have got laid tonight if I just tried, but none of them fucking tried. And that's really common by the way, that a girl will go out and just no one will fucking hit on her because everyone's 100%. a giant fucking raging pussy and they're scared yeah. of rejection or, no, and, and the thing too, to that point is literally like, it's actually mostly from doing the, um, you know, the day game approaches and just going, getting more confident, hitting on girls and stuff. But I remember going out to, to bars a few times with friends and it was like, it was kind of like unplugging from the matrix in a way. It was like, you just, I just went there and I just, you know, would see all these girls and I'm like, dude, like literally, yeah, no one is talking to any of them. Yeah. And I, I you know, I'd see guys with gr groups of cute girls and like, kind of the social scene made a bit more sense i was like all right this is clearly like a group of friends from college like that's kind of how the guys have the end here like you know these people are sort of together maybe they're just like friends from something else but yeah the single girls i'm like no one's making a move and like the guys the other guys i'm like they're not they're not gonna make it do anything like you know it's kind of it's pretty easy to just get in there and, and uh make something happen and i think you'd be the first person to admit that you're not like it's not like you're the smoothest, most confident, most badass, best looking, hottest fucking stud muffin <laughs> ever, right? Yeah. Like yeah, your yeah. style is pretty fucking decent. But when we first started, like you were average. Yeah. You can say yeah. slightly above average. But it, again, it's not like you're a fucking god. And this is yeah. the point I really want to drill into people. It's like, why did you get laid, you know, three times? You had two fuck buddies at once. You made out with a bunch of other girls. You did a bunch of like crazy shit that we'll talk about, you know, some kinky shit, some exploring some bucket list stuff. But why did you do that shit? Because you fucking tried. Not because yeah. of some special. It's like you just fucking tried. That was it. Like, yeah, totally. And I, I think it's, um, I think part of it too, it's like you got to know your strengths and sort of play to your advantage and stuff. Like, and I, I definitely go going in i had some strengths and, and clearly some weaknesses which you really helped me on like i think um you know i'm like slightly below average height like uh probably like you know decent looking and stuff i'm, I'm a relatively social person so i feel like if i can kind of get in there and strike up a conversation i'll like do pretty well and i feel like if i know a girl's into me like i kind of know what to do from there but yeah i was especially like before we started working together the idea of like going up and, and hitting on a girl during the day or just like meeting a girl and like really making it happen i was just like I'm like, dude, that's impossible. Like, there's no way that works. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I remember you being very, like, because you hadn't done any when you first hit me up. Like, when we first yeah. started coaching, you hadn't done any approaches during the day. You ended up doing, like, 50 or something, right? Yeah, did yeah. a little over, a little over 50, um, you know, since we stopped that's working in, together. That's in, like, 12 weeks. So. But in 12 weeks, did about 50. And uh, that was just fucking crazy to me. Yeah, I'm just like, I was like, I didn't know you could do this. And the... Um, first girl I, I hit on I got a number I think the like fourth or fifth girl I hit on I got a number uh like very like the first girl it was you know it was part of that luck that kind of just like encouraged me to keep going but um literally like I asked for her number and she's like yeah I'll like gladly give my number to you like, gave it to me and was like walked away like smiling like literally like was in like clearly like beaming from the experience and I was like Fuck, this is this is sick yeah I think that's the magical moment where you realize like not only can you get numbers from girls and sleep with them by just walking up and talking to them, but that they will actually be happy that you did. Like they will be genuinely excited to talk to you genuinely, like really, really, really excited. And you're like, Oh shit, this isn't just like, it's in that moment where it feels real. It's like, this yeah. is a real human being who's actually into me. That's like incredibly fucking validating and fun and nice. And it's like, we get to do something together. I'm not just getting laid. I'm actually finding women that really fucking like me. And she wants to get laid too. Yeah. Like, wow. This is kind of fun. No, totally. And I, I would genuinely say with the uh, the 50 approaches, I didn't have any that were like that bad. I mean, like, like 
you hear these horror stories like you go to reddit and they're like oh you know girl like threw her drink in my face my first ever approach Which just like, isn't real life like i just it's don't not real that, life that's that's not what real life is like people aren't like yeah that. girls are not like they're that. not like that yeah i mean i don't even think i had any that were like i would even say like remotely bad i mean i had some where I kind of like went up and started talking and the girl like wasn't super into it, you know, like maybe she's just not available or maybe just like there wasn't the vibe. And like, mm -hmm. I was like, all right, whatever, have a nice day. Like, you know, it's all good. Um, there's one I approached um, kind of late at night and it was not super late, like maybe like eight, eight or eight thirty. it was a bit dark. And I think she's maybe a little nervous, but I was very like considerate about it. And it was, all the experiences were awesome. Yeah, I did not. And it, all the experiences were awesome. And then some were like fantastic. Like it clearly like the girl, as you said, really appreciated it. and. Um, it was just like a win-win on all levels. And that's hilarious because when guys haven't approached before, and I was exactly the same before I ever did it, you have all these thoughts in your head of like, what if I get yelled at? What if she abuses me? What if she tells me I'm a creep? What if everyone watches? What if like the security guard comes and arrests me for fucking, I don't know, <laughs> saying hello to some women? Like yeah. you have all these crazy thoughts in your head. And what happens 99% of the time is it's just like normal. She's yeah. either into you or she's not. I shouldn't say 99% of the time, but like a bunch of the time it's like that. And then the rest of the time, it's like, she's really fucking excited. Either she has a boyfriend, so she can't be with you or she gives you her phone number, but either way, she's really fucking excited. And that's the part that blows most guys mind. They, that's the part they hadn't prepared for. They didn't yeah. expect that any girls would be like over the top excited. And then when that happens the first couple of times, you're like, oh wait, I thought you were gonna just bite my head off or tell me to go fuck myself. And instead, <laughs> like this was fun. I wasn't expecting this to be fun and nice and yeah. you to be excited. Yeah, especially if you're like, you know, considered about it. Like, if, you know, if she's yeah, like, I have know, a boyfriend. If you're chilling, like, normal like, and... if you're chilling normal about it, or like she's like, I'm not feeling it. You're like, yeah, it's cool. Like, you know, have a good day. Um, they always appreciate it. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think it's it's really when I don't know. Maybe guys are reading too much of that. You know, some of the pickup stuff can get a bit extreme. Maybe the it says she's not interested and the guy just keeps pushing pushing and, yeah. and i have a boyfriend and he's a like, well, fuck but... your boyfriend i'm gonna fuck you anyway it's like <laughs> i'm more alpha than him yeah yeah like, yeah gotta uh gotta have some social uh acuity and stuff so yeah as long as you're normal is the best way i can phrase it and if you're listening and you go what does he mean by normal that's like a vague term i just mean like what you just said if she says i'm not interested or i have a boyfriend or no thank you you go okay cool like see ya no, no stress like that's uh, it totally. that's being fucking normal and then if you do that like you're never gonna get a, i won't say never but like one in a hundred reactions will be negative maybe one in 50 if you're bad unless you're yeah, totally agree. morbidly obese and 60 years old and you smell and you haven't washed yourself in a month yeah probably then go and handle those things first but <laughs> <laughs> i would have to ask if you're, if you're all of those things why are you going outside to talk to girls anyway but I, I mean, respect that. If you, if you have all those things that, yeah, if you, if you have all those things and you're still approaching, I'm just like, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm like, I respect more that, power yeah. to you, you know? No one else is going to yeah. respect it, but we will. We will. Just us. Yeah. So more changes that you made. Let's talk about the actual sex stuff. You you did some kinky stuff, yeah. you dirty, dirty man. Some stuff that you hadn't done before. You had a chick swallow yeah. your cum. You came on a girl's face. Yeah. Stuff that you hadn't done before. And... Uh -huh. You know, it's funny. It's like to a lot of guys, they'll be like, oh yeah, I've done that stuff. But there are a hell of a lot of guys that have never done stuff like that. And they consider that like really fucking filthy, like coming on a girl's face. Yeah. I guess my first question would be like, how come you hadn't ever done that? And bearing in mind, there was yeah. a point where I hadn't done it. I didn't do it until I was like, I don't know, 29 was the first time I ever tried yeah. it. So. Yeah. I mean, so I think part of it for me, um, which I think another thing which we're probably going to talk more about is like, a lot of the times when I'm like having sex and stuff, like I will, I just won't come a lot of the time. Yeah, um, yeah you had issues like, with coming. We could have had issues with coming. And uh, as, I, as I talked about with you, um, you know, there's pros and cons to it. Like some girls are like, yeah, it's like fucking, they're like, I love it. What we a can stud. like go for hours. Yeah. Like it's like, right, what a stud. And then, you know, I, I found too that a lot of girls that some of them take it personally where they're kind of like, you yeah. know, I feel maybe you're not as into me because I'm not making you come. Yeah, and others are like, that's oh, a challenge. Like ugly. I can... Yeah, I mean, others, though, they're like, oh, like, you're a tough nut to crack. Like, I'm going to make you come. They're, like, really committed to it. But um, I think part of it, to answer your question, um, you know, with a lot of them, like, we have sex for, I don't know, like, with breaks and stuff, maybe, like, an hour, hour and a half. And then, like, you know, I'd just be like, hey, can you just, like, finish me off? And she'd be like, a hand drop. 
job or like a blow job or like some combo. Um, and like, uh, for whatever reason, a lot of the girls that I've been with, and, and um, I think now it's, it's probably about 15 um, that I've actually had, like had sex with. Um, they're all just like, yeah, like I, I, I'm fine giving blow jobs. I don't really like, like they, they've even said like you can come in my mouth, but like, I don't like swallowing it or like, you know, that's not my thing or whatever. Um, so for whatever reason, I just, the girls I was with just kind of weren't that into it. Um, and it got in my head. I'm just, yeah, like, it's hard to find girls who are into this. Like, it's not a common thing or like, it's like a fetish or something. And then like, yeah, like since I started working with you, I'm like, actually, I think girls are very into this. Or like, yes. It's far more common than I realized. Yeah. And that would just be a screening thing. Like when you start screening for girls that are a little more comfortable with their sexuality, a little more sexual. Yeah. You know, you start finding more of the overlap on the Venn diagram of like your, your kinks and then her kinks, they start overlapping a lot more simply because yeah. she's just more sexual. She's more open-minded. It's why I laugh whenever guys use the word slut or they're like, she's a slut. It's like, isn't that a good thing? First of all, that, that word means fucking nothing, but like, mm. isn't that a good thing? Doesn't that mean she's going to swallow your fucking cum? You're going to come on her face. Cause <laughs> the girl who did it first, is it the same girl that I'm thinking of? Obviously like, let's not dox the pearl girl but yeah it's the girl it's the girl who called you daddy and stuff right um the first girl no no so the, the first girl i'm gonna think you know the one i'm talking about she the one that was like crazy yeah, yeah. over the top and kinky and like really, really yeah yeah cool. and she like opened your mind she opened your world up yeah i don't know if she actually it wasn't daddy but what, what did she call me she basically was like, yeah, like no, she's that. like, no, she's like, she said, you this will, pussy belongs you will, to you. This pussy belongs to you. Yeah. Like, do whatever you want to me. Like, mm -hmm. this body's your body. Like, I want everyone to know this is your body. Like, and to your point about the overlap, um, she actually was really fascinating. Uh, she like, she's like, oh, I'm like a super submissive person in bed. There's like this BDSM test. You can take this and it'll tell you mm -hmm. what you are. And like, for me, I'm a pretty like dominant person in bed. Mm -hmm. um, so like, it just, that was a fucking epiphany I had where I was like, you know, it's a weird thing to say in hindsight. Cause when you, when you hear it, it makes total sense. But I'm, I'm like, you know, I thought like me, like just doing whatever I wanted in bed and like trying all these things, like tying girls up. I'm like, this is something I'll enjoy, but like a girl will kind of just, you know, she'll put up to it. find someone who, who she'll put up with it. And I was like, how funny is it that like, <laughs> I like to do all these things. And there's girls who like, it's way better if, you know, they like the the opposite, like fucking just match is a perfect match. Yeah. Mm. I think there was a huge part of like, uh, like a lot of what you and I, and I didn't necessarily give you these epiphanies. I gave you some of them, but a lot of it was just like, I gave you the permission to try, to try with these girls, to find these girls, to explore with these girls. I did yeah. push you to write a sexual bucket list and stuff like that. But what yeah. you find is once you start opening up to like more kinky sex, and part of that mm. is also, yeah, as I say all the time, being more honest. You learned uh -huh. like through our coaching, we, we spent a bunch of time, like literally coaching. I coached you on how to be honest with girls and how to tell them exactly what you wanted, how to have the conversation of like, look, I'm not looking for anything serious. Look, I am going to see other girls. Are you okay yeah. with that? Is that something that you're into? Like having that conversation allows or being that honest allows them to open up to you and be a lot filthier and kinkier and not hold back and all that sort of stuff. So I think this whole journey for you for the last like, you know, 12 weeks or whatever it's been has been you like exploring honesty exploring kinks exploring yeah. like filthiness like dirtiness seeing that for the first time okay the things that i'm into like you said yeah. there are girls that are into that shit as well and like yeah. they exist it's not just like i have these fantasies and maybe she'll let me do them it's like no there are girls that will get off on you doing them in fact there are girls that will only sleep with guys who will do stuff like that there are plenty yes. of, you know like the girl you dated there are plenty of girls that are submissive and will only sleep with dominant guys because they know what they like like I, yeah. I am not going to sleep with a dominant girl. I know that yeah. I like submissive girls. So every girl I find will be submissive. And like the girl you dated, she probably will only date dominant guys. Yeah. And, and that's actually a thing. It's, uh, mm. it, it's funny for me because I feel like a lot of the girls that, um, even, even kind of like the last girl I dated, a lot of the girls I end up sleeping with pretty consistently, like tend to be pretty submissive, usually like tinier girls. Like even the, the last girl I was with, she's like, she was about, um, um, five one and she's like she's like yeah you know i just love like being dominated in bed and she's like all she's like all my like smaller friends they all like have that's a thing for them like they fucking love that yeah 
all my small friends club we get together and we talk about how we like big boys the small girls <laughs> yeah. the big boys it's, like a, it's like a facebook group of just like yep. all tiny girls just talking small about girl how they want to group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly uh, but no it is it, it this whole thing for you like again i really want to reiterate it I felt like you gave yourself permission to start enjoying these things or to like screen for them, to look for them. Cause before they'd just kind of been background things that you, you knew you wanted, but like, you know, either didn't have any way to get them or you didn't know that you were allowed to get them or you just weren't directly going for them, especially things like casual relationships and dating multiple girls at once, which was something you'd never done. And then, yeah. you know, for pretty much the entire time I was seeing you, the entire time we were doing coaching, you, you had two girls going on at the same time. And like going on dates still and like yeah. having other and, and action and more stuff. Girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that was, yeah, that was like just such a sick experience. And um, I mean, you yeah, talk about I, it like it's over. You're still doing it. I'm still doing it. I mean, I'm seeing, yeah. I'm seeing one still. The other one, uh, you know, she, she didn't want something more serious eventually. But uh, I think part of it too, uh, another thing of just, as you said, like the honesty, the directness, all this, hmm. and part of just the reps from approaching. I feel like I just became a much more confident, much more uh, proactive person in general. And it's a thing where I feel like when I'm approaching and when I'm even like talking to girls now, I'm just like a lot more like flirty. Like I just kind of fuck around a lot more. Like I have a good time. I enjoy it. Like it's, it's less of like the robotic, like I'm going here and I'm just spitting my, like my script at you. <laughs> so we're like, okay, let's like, I, you know, you're, you're like, you're like actually enjoying yourself. You're having a fun time. And, uh, that's been a relatively recent thing that's been it's made it a lot more fun to be honest because we had a couple of conversations about that and to be honest it wasn't very hard to push you to be more like real or authentic or like chill or enjoy yourself when you're approaching that didn't yeah. really take much prompting i basically yeah. was like you're allowed to have fun with this and you're like oh really and I, I gave you some examples of times like of ways that i'm goofy and things that i say and you were like i think i want to do this and then you just like did you ran with yeah. it and that is for some guys, that's such a huge hurdle to get over where they think like, but this is serious. Like, this is the rest of my life here. This is like getting laid. This is like, I have to, I have to do a good job. And it's like, you're literally allowed to walk up to a woman. And like, I, I had, a, I just did a coaching call with another client, like, like just before this podcast. And I said like, dude, you're literally allowed to walk up and say like, Hey, do you think I have a gay face? Like you can, you can do that if you want to, right? Like you can say whatever the fuck you want. You can literally do the stupid pickup artist shit if you want to and walk up and say, who do you think cheats more, men or women? That's like the fucking opening line for every pickup artist. The classic one, yeah. yeah. Or like, what's your favorite vegetable, broccoli or asparagus? Like you can say that shit if you want to. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You can walk up and be like, yo, would you fuck me? Or do you think I'm just like, I'm not really fuckable. Like, would you fuck me? And if she's like, uh, maybe, and then you can be like, sweet. Like, what are you up to? What's your name? Like, I'm fucking Andy. What are you doing? Like, you can say whatever the fuck you want. I've done approaches yeah. where I just walk up and I have a goofy fucking smile on my face. And I just say like, hey, and I'm just smiling for like 30 seconds. And she's staring at me smiling. And she's like, why are you smiling at me? And I would, I would just keep smiling and not say anything. I've done that. Like, whatever the fuck you want to do. And you really ran with that shit. You were just like, oh, I'm in my element now. If I get to just enjoy myself and be normal and, like, yeah. be my natural self, like, I don't have to have these goofy fucking pickup lines. Or I can do goofy fucking pickup lines, but I don't have to, like, stick to this structure. Yeah, and I, I think for for me, it was a relatively, um, as you said, kind of a relatively natural transition. Because I think I'm I'm kind of like that in general. Like, I sort of like yeah. fucking with people a bit. Like, I'm, a, I'm like a playful person. So I was like, yeah, I can just you know, why don't I just do this more with girls? Um, and, and what you were saying too about like these kind of unique openers and stuff or, or just kind of having a good time. There's this guy new in uh, California who like, yeah, he's just a fucking master of that. He's got like this long hair. He kind of looks like, like not not quite Jesus, but like, you know, sort of this, this hippie kind of vibe. And he just like goes in, he's just like fucking around with people. He like says like ridiculous shit and like he like crushes it. Like girls fucking love it. So yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of it's just like, what are you? Do you have a good vibe? Like, you know, do you really like? Are you having a good time? So, I think for you, I said to you very early on, you're you you're gonna have a a lot of success as soon as you actually give yourself permission to go outside and start talking to girls because you're yeah. you know you run your own business, you have your shit together, you're in your thirties. Like, yeah. I said that to you from the first session we had. I was like, mate, you should be absolutely fine. You just haven't done it before, but as soon as you actually yeah. like go out and actually do it a few times, you have like exactly the right vibe. You've got that. I mean, you're not an old, you're my age basically, but like yeah. th there's a vibe that you have when you're a business owner, especially, and you know, your own business. And I mean, it'd be difficult to be a business owner if it wasn't your own business, but you're, you're a business owner of your own business. You're in your thirties. Like 
There's a vibe that comes across there, especially to younger chicks. They're like, holy shit, this guy, maybe he doesn't fully have his shit together, but he has his shit together more than me. That's like attractive in itself. And you're already decent at talking to people. And there are a yeah. bunch of clients that I work with where it's like, I I even said to you on like our fifth session, mate, I feel, because you said, I remember we had this session. You were like, Andrew, yeah. I just really want to thank you for everything. I was like, man, I'm not fucking doing anything, man. I'm literally <laughs> just like, I mean, and, and, and to toot my own horn, fine. Like I, I was doing, I, we both know I did shit, but like it felt like for the most part, I just had to like gently push you in the right direction and you just like fucking ran with it. And I said to you, like, you're my favorite type of client where they yeah. just rock up. They want to do the work. I say, do this, do this, do this. And they go, okay, I did that. What do I do next? Like, that's my favorite kind of fucking client. Yeah. So, no, good 100%. Job. Good job being I my mean, favorite type of client. I, I do what I can. I mean, I, I think part of it, <laughs> part of it too, I think is that, uh, yeah, I just, I've, I've kind of done enough of these things that I know um, the work's on me. Like yeah. even it, it the coach can give you can only push so hard. It's like you really do have to meet the pathway to make it work. And uh, yeah, as you said, I mean, I think it's being a business owner. I think it's um, just having like gone through tough situations and, and proven to yourself you can get through them. Hmm. And it helps being in your thirties in a way as well. Like, I think there's just a certain, I think part of it is this, cause I think that, you know, you read all these fucking blogs, like, oh, this is how you'd be like an alpha. This is how you'd be super confident. Like try this, like, you know, visualize this or like, you know, you say these affirmations and part of it is just like, let's use the business owner example, like to achieve certain things in life, you kind of need to adjust behavior in certain ways. And the thing I found that's one of the things I love most about like competition goals, self-improvement striving is like, no matter, like if you are serious about hitting certain targets, you have to change for the better and you have to develop as a person. Yes. And I found um, just like, yeah, through the things I've been through, like you just, you know, you have to have, you have to learn to have boundaries. You have to learn to be like efficient with how you operate. You have to like, kind of like cut through crap and just be like, all right, this isn't working. Like what do I do next? And I yeah. think, especially, yeah, when you hit 30, if you've done it right, there's a certain like weight to your presence that as you said, like people respond to like, I, there's some younger guys in the group who are like early twenties or even mid twenties. And like, they're like, Oh, like all these girls are flaking on me or like, you know, this happened in a date. She, you know, she kind of like called me out on this. And I was like, I don't really get that. Like girls don't do that to me anymore. Yeah. You get less shit from girls. Don't you? Once you, once you, cause there's a certain presence that you have. I told you that early on, like you do have a certain presence, you know, like you're not a fucking God or something, but you just have that confidence from, yeah. I guess, being in your thirties. And I guess I, I want to take a step back to something you said a second ago where you said like, yeah. you know, part of really any goal, you, you listed a, a bunch of qualities, but of how to achieve a goal. But one of them I think has to be, you said like adjusting, but I think part of that is like humility and dropping your ego and saying, if I want something to work, but what mm. I'm doing isn't working, I have to, at some point say, maybe what I'm doing isn't the way to do it. Like, even though yes. I invested in this being the right solution, reality is giving me a different you know, feedback and saying, no, like, I know you want to, here's a, here's a good example. I know you want to be able to use your shitty bathroom selfies, not you personally, but like a bunch of guys <laughs> want to be able to use their shitty bathroom selfies on Tinder and get laid, or they want to get laid on Tinder without ever using a boost, or they want to get laid in person talking to one girl a week. It's like, I'm sorry, but like, you have to drop your ego and say, if you're not getting the results you want, then change something. As you said, change something. If you're going outside yeah. and not getting any phone numbers, talk to 10 times the women, and then you'll get 10 times better or lose some fucking weight or change your fucking wardrobe. We didn't even talk about that. You radically updated your entire wardrobe. Thanks, Radical, yeah. my fucking moderator on my forums. He's He did a coaching session with you and helped you change your, you know, your outfit and stuff, but you got you to fucking change something like- you can't yeah. just sit there and be invested in your method that isn't fucking working. Drop your ego and try something different. No, and I, I think uh, a couple of thoughts on that. I think one of the things I've always been, one of the things I'm kind of blessed with, um, and I've heard it from a few people, they're like, you take feedback better than like anyone I know. Yeah, I, you do. I, like, I, I don't take the, I, I'm going to say I don't have an ego because I'm a, a hyper competitive person, but like, I'm just so focused on like, how do I get the result? Like, how do I make this work? I just, if someone's like, your, your approach is to shit. I'm like, yeah, right. like, let's, let's do something better. And I think that something I try to do um, and like I operate by, I kind of call it like the scored mentality. I'm just like, you know, let, 
it's, it's easy to lie to yourself if you don't have a hard goal, if you don't have others holding you accountable, if you don't just like write down and show to others, like, this is what I'm going to do by this, this date. This is what I want. Like, yeah. the, this is what I'm shooting for. This is my objective. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, if you, if you do do that and you, you consistently do that, you know, <laughs> eventually you're going to have to adapt. Like mm-hmm. you either, like your friends, then when you know, is just going to like shit on you and just be like, look, like you said you were going to do this. You, you failed like 50 times <laughs> or it's the case of you're going to be like, my approach isn't working. Let's figure this out. But I think it's, it's the people who kind of have these wishy washy standards and goals. And they're like, Oh yeah, maybe, you know, maybe I'll do this. Uh, You know, I, I, you know, I I might do that, that they're the ones that can delude themselves indefinitely. And um, yeah, yeah. That's why I, you know, I gotta say like, what is, what is the, what does the scoreboard say? Did you hit it or didn't you? And yes. Did you achieve it or not? You, you You have no idea how many people rock up to, you know, you know how before I, go ahead with coaching, like with you, with anyone else, we sit down, we do a call, we figure out like, it's a, fr- like not a coaching call, but like a, a free call to say like, are we going to work together? Like, is this a good fit? Do I think you're going to change? Do you think I'm yeah. going to help you change? Like all that shit. Do you know how many times I sit down on those? You had fairly decently defined goals. Do you know how many times I sit down and someone has no fucking goals whatsoever? There will be several guys in my group coaching right now who will listen to this and go, oh shit, he's talking about me. And I'll call you guys out because like, why the fuck not? (laughs) One guy came in and said, I want to actualize my potential. That was his goal. I want to actualize my potential. (laughs) I was like, bro, that's like something Uh, that I read on Instagram. That's like, that's not, that's not a goal. That's like something it's, like it's like you're reading like the horoscopes column in the newspapers yeah this month yeah. your the aquarius will be actualizing their potential gemini you will be reaching your higher self uh yes. like, like <laughs> exactly it does, but that's such a common thing i'm shitting on this guy but like do you know how many that's like 95 percent of people will come to me and i'll say what's your goal i want to get better with women it's like that's not a goal if that's yeah. your goal, you're just going to pay me for 12 weeks of coaching and I'm going to run to the bed. Be- I'd never actually do that. But like, you know, that's like, if you were going to run into someone less scrupulous or someone unscrupulous, they would just say like, thanks for the money, fuckhead. Like, I don't have to do anything because you haven't set a goal. Like, how are you going to achieve that goal? So the first thing that, you know, I did with you, you already had some decently defined goals. But the first thing I do with everyone yeah. is like, I sit down even on that call. So even if they haven't said they're going to do coaching with me, I say, mate, whether or not you do coaching with me or not, you need to define some fucking goals. Like how many girls are you going to sleep with? What type of girls do you want to sleep with? Or is it a weight loss goal that you have? How many pounds do you want to lose? Do you want to gain muscle? How much muscle? How much strength do you want to gain? Like, do you you want friends? How many friends? What type of friends? Would they take a bullet for you? Like define the actual fucking goal before you go for it or you're never going to get there. And you already said it, but I think most people, most people in life just have a like a vaguely sort of like a nebulous like leaf in the wind kind of like floaty wishy-washy goal but they haven't actually sat yeah. down and said i want to make this much money which is something that you were really good at i know with your business and stuff you had like actual yep. tangible metrics that you could measure as you said i look at the scoreboard i've either reached this goal or i haven't or i'm 80 percent of the way to the goal or i'm 20 yeah. percent. like i know exactly how far i am so you know for everyone, I think your first step has to be set your fucking goals. If you don't know your goals, ask someone else. Like, what goal should I have? But that's yeah. kind of step one. And I, yeah, hundred percent. I I personally think that there's a kind of pro- a progression to this stuff as well. I think I'm probably someone who's a bit unusual in that I've been into self help like literally like as long as I can remember. Probably since I was like twelve. Like I've been setting goals since I was maybe like fourteen. In mm-hmm. um, and I, I the thing I think the biggest epiphany like i had at some point and like i know i've told this to you before i mentioned to other guys in the forum is like i think it's a tendency for a lot of people i think especially people who have they're they're kind of artificially creating goals like maybe they have a job and they're like kind of looking for goals to occupy their time uh but they'll have so many different goals and they they kind of treat everything in isolation so like my goals are um you know i want to lose like 10 pounds this year and like say 5,000 and, uh, you know, uh, talk to like uh, 10 girls a week and um, like they'll, they'll have like, like eight goals or like, you know, goals as, as things they want to do. Mm-hmm. And over time, more and more, especially as I've gotten older, I'm like, I've realized having one or two like very big, clear goals that you're really all in on and like that, like these mean a lot to you and, like, and these mm-hmm. are your main focus, that gets you so much farther because when you, yeah. when you achieve those goals, there's all these other benefits that come with it. Like I could have, you know, I could have said, um, okay, like my, my goal for this year, you know, is I, I want to become more confident. 
and I want to sleep with more girls, and I want to, uh, you know, I want to explore a, a kinky side of myself. And I could, I could have come up with eight goals. Instead, I just said I want to, you know, sleep with three girls at once, and I want to like have this amount of sex. And like through the process, I achieved everything else. Yeah, like just through that journey. Um, so that's yeah. I think the key is like really have that focus, have that like extreme commitment, one or two big things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know Chris from good loser he says one which is probably ideal if you can do um but uh yeah i mean when, when i was working with you it was like girl business i literally like zoned everything else out i'm like this is all i have time for uh and it, it paid off and here's how you do that so because you know the thing that people say to me all the time like especially if they're at the start of their journey or they have a bunch of goals they want to work on they say like but mm. how can i fucking pick one or two goals to obsess about like but i have all this other shit to do and what i say is take a deep breath get out a notebook or use an online notebook i use evernote but you can use fucking one note or any of the other ones and write down all your goals mm. all the things you want to achieve and leave yep. them in that notebook and then pick one or two that you work from and then know that that notebook is there for you. You will come back to it once you've achieved that first one or two goals and mm. just focus 100% on that one or two goals and kind of like ignore the rest of the stuff in the notebook. Maybe you can have them as background goals that you kind of work on from time to time, but they can't take up all of your fucking time and focus. You do have to prioritize. You do need to pick one or two goals and just go fucking balls deep with those. Knock yeah. those off, you know, hurry up and knock them off and then work on the next ones. Cause you'll achieve things 50 times quicker than if you try and juggle like 10 goals at once. You want to achieve- you build, you, you build momentum as well. Yeah, like exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. You've ticked them yeah. off quicker. So it feels like you're making progress. You're not, cause by the time you achieve eight goals, that might take you four fucking years if you try and do eight goals at once. If you just do one goal at a time, you could do that in three months. You could do that in one month, depending on the- 100%. Year. Yeah, and I think, I think um, let's say the goal is like weight loss and you lose like 20 pounds. If you're 100%, Committed to that, um, you know, you are you'll probably lose it super fast. And you're like, look, I'm lean, I have more energy, I, I've proven to myself I can stick to something, and you'll just go ham. And the other thing too that I think people neglect to talk about is the idea of um contradictory. So I think of an example where you're like, maybe this is this is this might not be example, um, but uh let's say your goal is like I want to save a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. But your goal is also like, I want to like, this isn't a perfect example. Like, all right, I want to save a lot of money, but I also like want to get laid a lot. Mm -hmm. And by getting laid a lot, you're going, you're going on tons of dates. You know, let's say like you're, you're spending a good amount on drinks. Like you're, spending you're not money on Tinder boost. You're, you're, you're spending money on Tinder boost. You pay for a photographer. You pay me for coaching. Yes. You yeah, pay me yeah. for coaching. Like these goals, like they kind of cancel each other out in many ways if instead you're like i'm just gonna sort out my sex life get everything i need done that is literally the only focus so like my energy is not being diverted you yeah. sort that out and you're like all right i'm fucking crushing it now let's go make some money mm -hmm. like you'll be in a much better spot and yeah. I, I think i see too too many people or like people will say my goal like this is another common one they'll say you know my goal is to like hit on like 30 girls a week uh, and I also plan to sleep like nine hours a night. Yeah. And, like, do yeah, other that, stuff. Yes, and it's like, yes. it's like, dude, like <laughs> this is not going to happen. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't like to use this word, but I do. Sometimes I use this word as like a cue, like a trigger to people intentionally to get them to understand what I'm trying to tell them. I say, mm. you may have to neglect. And again, I don't usually use that word, but sometimes for some people I have to say, you have to neglect your other goals while you work on this one. So if yeah. they're, if they're like you're saying, they say, I want to start my own business and make a shit ton of money and I am a virgin and I want to lose it. I say, you're going to have to neglect your business and your, your money for a while, make enough yeah. money so that you can pay the bills, but you're going to have to neglect it. It's got to be like, it's going to get neglected, getting late and losing your virginity and going out and, and building a a better body, a better Tinder profile, or going out and building confidence so you can talk to girls outside, that shit will take effort. You can't yeah. be building a business on top of that. So neglect the business a little bit. Go and do yeah. that shit. Obviously, don't neglect until the point where you're fucking homeless, but... No, it's so true. And I, I think of... I use the term, I think, like... You have to commit a certain amount of kind of energy or effort or get, even just, like, get enough reps in something. Yeah. And if you if you kind of do that enough you you reach a new baseline you reach a new higher level and like this is kind of now the new uh standard for you yeah and then you can go do something else you're like i've built a muscle memory if i come back to this i kind of like know that i can do this i have that confidence but if you don't get there you know if i if, I, if you start working with andy and you you talk to five girls or ten girls and like you kind of call it quits 
you might as well talk to none. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. I, I found for me, I think after about 35 or 40, it started clicking and I'm like, this yep. feels a lot more enjoyable. Yeah, you obviously need to build a habit and, and get in there and actually take the action. And something you said a second ago kind of made me think of something else we were going to talk about. You said like a new baseline, like a new level going forwards. That was something that you learned um, through our coaching with that girl that you dated that was like really, really filthy and into lots of like kinky stuff. And you had the chance to really explore some of your kinks. And as yeah. I said to you, this is really good learning experience for you because now you've set a new baseline going forward. It's like now you won't accept a girl who's like a little bit less open with sex or a little more yes. puritanical. Like, why would you accept that? You also did the same with screening for the traits that you want in women. We, we did a bunch of coaching calls. We literally sat down and, you know, you said, what kind of woman am I looking for? And we just like brainstormed and you went off and did it yourself as well. And we came up with like traits that you want in a woman. We talked yeah. about like uh, relationship options. And when we say relationship options, we meant you wanted to move towards or, or to practice more having like non-monogamy with women, dating multiple mm -hmm. women at once. You know, we, we talked about that over coaching sessions and that became your new like baseline as well. So you, yeah. you had a baseline for like, I'm going to sleep with really kinky girls. I know the kind of women that I want now that I can get yep. and I'm going to screen for those women and it's going to be like casual open relationships which I haven't done before or I haven't done much of before like that's my new fucking baseline totally and I, th I think part of it too is just like how the like, different girls I talked to like how many of them were open to this stuff like there was one I was seeing who like seemed a bit more vanilla like not you know I would not have thought would be into this stuff and I and you uh, had the conversation yeah I pushed you to have the conversation, conversation. Uh, she's like, oh yeah, handcuffs getting tied up. It sounds like a lot of fun. And like, I used the yeah. wand on her. Like, it's, it's funny. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, I got like a surprise. And I took out the wand. She's like, oh, that's not what I was expecting. And for but anyone like, who I, doesn't know what you mean, it's this giant fucking like massive, it's like that fucking big. It's this big like vibrator and it's called yeah. the magic wand and it's so fucking powerful. It's like a giant. Yeah. And I used it on her and uh, it was, yeah, she's just like, I think at first, it was okay, so it was interesting and it was cool. Like you said, with this idea of honesty and getting more comfortable. Cause like mm -hmm. when we first used it, um, I think she was probably a bit self-conscious. Like she actually was like kind of she was like laughing a lot. Like she was kind of yeah. giggling and and I was like, isn't this supposed to like feel like sexually arousing? Like, why are you laughing? Like she, she's like, oh like, I don't know. Like it's, it's like I, nervous I'm not, laughter. Like nervous laughter. Um, and then she actually though, like we had sex for a bit. She's like, wait, I want to, I really do want to try it again. Like, let's do it. And we did it. And like, yeah, she just like fucking loved it. Like got like really, really like into zone where she was just like losing her shit, like just having like the craziest orgasm ever and stuff. So uh, yeah, definitely works. I love seeing you talk about this and it was, it was a joy to work with you, by the way, I've said that to you many times, but like, I want to read out a quote or I want to segue to a quote that you said, yeah. Uh, you posted it in the group, in the, in the group coaching group. Um, yeah. You said the last few months have been a mind blowing amount of growth and progress. They totally mm -hmm. shattered my perception of what I thought was possible for me in my sex life and have changed the way that I relate to women. And like, even watching you, like listening to you talk about this stuff and how excited you are now, like yeah. what changed, like, what did you think was possible before versus like, what do you think is possible now? Oh man, that's a good question. Uh, I think, oh man, that's, I feel like there's so many like kind of levels to this. Um, I think before I kind of just thought, I just didn't really feel like I was in control of stuff. Like it all just felt more of like a crapshoot to me. Yeah. Like I would see like a girl I was like kind of into in a bar and I'd be like, oh, like I hope she like, you know, gives me like a hint, you know, gives me a hint that she's into me or like, you know, maybe, you know, I can go say hi. Like I'll, I'll try my luck. You know, people say like, oh, shoot your shot and stuff. Yep. But it's, they kind of use that as like, yes, like, like you're scratching a lottery ticket. And it's, it's, it's in, in a way, it's kind of like, yeah, but there's unlimited scratch cards out there. Like you could go and make your own luck. Uh, you can find the girls that are interested in you. I think I'm still trying to fully internalize it. But like, mm -hmm. as we talked more and more about screening, like I just, it was like just this crazy epiphany. Cause I'd heard the term before, like I knew what it meant. I knew, I kind of understood how it worked, but like, when I was, I used to be so nervous before. I was like, oh, like, like w w if I say this, what if a girl re responds in this way? Or like, oh, you know, what if, you know, I say I'm into kinky sex and she like shames me for it. And I was just like, 
yeah, that's just like not who I'm looking for. Like who, who gives a fuck, you know? Like I, I'm literally like out here, I've got, it's like, it's like I'm filling a job and I've got like a, a description of what I'm looking for and you either fit or you don't. And mm-hmm. when you are that honest and you're that upfront and you find the right person, they're so much more into you and they appreciate yeah. it so much more. And it, like the attraction is so much stronger. So I guess I would say, I used to just kind of think this was like a, like a, you get, you know, you get lucky. This is kind of a gamble. Like it's, it's hard to really like push to really kind of have much of a process here. And now I'm just like, fuck, I can, I can do anything if I put in the work. Yeah. And that's why, you know, like what you said before, pick one goal and really go for it. And yeah. that's probably the biggest thing that I notice at the end of like, when I finish up, especially with my one-on-one clients, because obviously one-on-one, I can go even balls deeper with the, like with helping you change and shit like that. But yeah. what I notice by the end is that people have this epiphany where they're like, oh fuck, like anything I want, I'm allowed to have. If I, if, if I work for it and it's like, yeah, you can have whatever the fuck you want, like in yeah. business, in money, in friendships, in women, in traveling around the world, in adventures, in how your day looks, in how much or how little you work in order to earn your money. Like your life can be whatever the fuck you want. Your health, you're in full control of that. Your sleep, your body, you're in full control of all of that like all yeah. of it and, and it's like uh, you, need to, you need to like reach a couple of goals to see that uh, and, and and to your point part of the epiphany too i had i didn't realize how many kind of factors were in my control because like <laughs> yeah. no no it's a part part of it too like it's like you know I'll, I'll read a lot of there's a few blogs i like um actually a lot of big game blogs and mm-hmm. these guys like some of them have very good content i'm like all right they, they're clearly very good at day game but what they always say, and I think part of this is like just, you know, they're trying to sell like their day game stuff is they're like, unless you're really good looking, like online dating is not a good fit. And like, you're kind of just like, yeah, but I can become very good looking. Yeah. And I'm competing against bathroom mirror selfies from these fucking slobs. Like, <laughs> I can't take better photos than that. So the thought, the thought of where I'm like, I can create, I can take much better photos, I can test photos. I can fix my style. I can get ripped. I can lose weight. Um, the one too, that was just an epiphany for me. Uh, the co- I think it's the combination of like great photos plus like getting ripped. Uh, there's, you know, a certain member of our, our of the group who uh, gets laid like four times a week just from having like, he's a r- super ripped. He has great photos. He kind of like just knows, you know, how to, how to leverage that to his advantage. Uh-huh. And I'm just like, dude, I didn't, I didn't think this was like, I thought getting ripped, you know, like, sure, like, sure, like, I, I would get some more matches and stuff, but it, it was Ooh, a difference of like a hundred times, 10, matches, yeah, like yeah. 10, 20, 50 X difference. Yeah. And just hearing it from him, I'm just like, that shattered my whole perception of this stuff. I'm like, this is, I, I, I it made me realize, yeah, I, I didn't have any clue about how all this worked. It's funny. It's funny that people do that, do what you said before, where they say, you can't get laid online dating is a scam you can't get laid on there unless you're really good looking and it's exactly what you said then just become good looking or people will say (laughs) the same with going outside and talking to girls they'll say you can't go and hit on girls outside only confident guys can do that and it's like okay so become confident and by the way the way you become confident is by just going outside and doing it like just talk to 100 women you'll get a little more confident but yeah it's funny isn't it that people just say like only people who know what they're doing can do that and it's like I had this epiphany too, and Good Looking Loser obviously helped me get this epiphany where it's like, if I don't know what I'm doing, I can just learn how to do, how to know what I'm doing. And if I don't look the way, if I don't look like a super hot fucking stud muffin, I can just improve that. It's like, it's like this mind blowing. It's like, because what people are really doing there is they're saying only cool guys can get laid outside or only hot guys can get laid on Tinder or only really hot guys can get laid in bars. Like you're writing it off and saying it's something that only other people can do or only really intelligent, hardworking people can start their own business and make money. It's like, no, like none of that is true. You could do all of that. It's not some, you know, thing that's only for the, those of us that are fucking deities and gods. Like it's not preordained that certain people like you, me can go and get laid. Like, no, anyone can get fucking laid. Like we're not special. Mm -hmm. I think you'd be the first person to say, I'm not special. You're not special. Yeah. Neither of us are maxed out with our looks, not even fucking close. You but, still but, have weight to lose. I'm a skinny yeah. fucking fag. Like we're nowhere near maxed out. And it almost doesn't matter because it's like we improved. But it, no, it's, it's funny you say that because it the word special, it's like, I think part of it, it's, it's like 
we are special in a way that we're people who commit to things. We're taking massive action. I think I think sure. you, you can learn to be that way. And I think that yes. especially as you get into the rhythm, you can become more and more like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it reminds me of this quote by um, this fitness guy, Martin Burkham, the guy who like came up with intermittent fasting and he's just like ripped his shit. And he's just like, you know, people see me and they say that like, you know, oh, you're, you're so lucky. Your genetics are good. Like that's how you got so ripped. And he's like, you're right. My genetics are amazing. I have this gene that makes me work my ass off in the gym for fucking <laughs> 15 hours a week for eight years straight. That's, that's the gene, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, um, I get the same bullshit, right? You're tall and you're white. So that's why you get laid in the like It had nothing to do with the years of overcoming depression and suicidal thoughts and the 77 pounds of fat that I lost. Nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with like overcoming my biggest insecurities and learning how to talk to women over like a four month period where I couldn't even do it. Then having a fucking breakdown for five months where I couldn't even go outside and talk to any women. I basically didn't leave the house. Like, nothing to do with any of that. It's just some arbitrary so, thing that you've picked. So, so two things I want to say on that. Um, one of them, I don't know if I told you all the details of this, but kind of how I found you initially was I was on like the Good Looking Loser forum. And like, I think I think it was some guy, it's gonna be like a shorter guy. And he's like, okay, good lord, I'm short. And you like, said <laughs> the funniest reply. He was like, look, you fucking like idiot. Like, here's some article I wrote, which is like 500 reasons that you're like, Excuses are bullshit. Like I, I've cataloged, cat- categorized every excuse on the planet with counterexamples. Like here you go. And I was like, I clicked to the site, and I was just kind of. I was first laughing. I was like, oh, this is like, this is pretty good. Um, especially the one where you're like Asian Indian guys. You're like, yeah. look, there's like a billion of you. Like you're some. You're apparently, you must be getting laid. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. No, if no, no but Asians like, and Indians can get laid. Why are they literally the top two populations on the planet? Because they no, apparently exactly. can't get laid. Like so, like that kind of no bullshit. Like this, like that really appealed to me. Um, but I think another thing too. I mean, two two quick things I'd say. I think one, everyone ignores their own advantages and like yes. s- assumes whatever else they don't have as the answer. Yep. Like. I have some friends who are like six, four and are making decent money, but they're like, oh, I don't get laid enough because like, oh, if I was making, you know, a million a year, a million a year, then I would get laid or, um, you know, th- there's always some excuse. And I, I think the question really is like, given what you've got, given kind of where you started, you know, what you're uh, just really where you're at in life and everything, or what, what advantages you were born with, you could say, mm-hmm. how are you doing versus people in a similar kind of bracket? Like yeah. you're, you're like six, two, right? Yeah. Six, one, six, two. Yeah. Yeah. All right, how many, how many six, one, six, two guys have laid like over a hundred girls? Like you. Yeah. Like fuck all. How many are having threesomes and doing yeah. all crazy shit? Yeah. It's like, it's yeah. like, yeah. Fucking these, uh, it's like I see, I was on Instagram the other day and they're like, oh, you know, like Elon Musk, like he's not self-made. He, his parents, are, you know, had some wealth growing up, but it's like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> How many people started off with that wealth and aren't like, fucking yeah, right. taking us and to Mars? The you richest, know, <laughs> the richest man on the fucking planet, right? Yeah, like they. Yeah. I just find it so silly. It just makes no fucking. It, it makes no sense. But rant over there. Yeah. And even a better comparison is not even. I like what you just said there. Compare yourself to others who are in that same bracket, but that's still cherry picking one particular facet. That's not a one to one. That's still apples and oranges. Like. Yeah. Elon Musk, who had a certain amount of money, is going to be different to someone else who had a certain amount of money. When they, like it, every six foot two guy is not exactly the same. So, yeah. here's the better comparison: Are you doing better than you were six months ago or three months ago? If not, then shut the fuck up and fix that. Like, don't yeah. sit. If your life is exactly the same as it was, or worse than it was uh. like three months, six months, a year ago, what the fuck are you doing sitting there making excuses and complaining? Like, fix your fucking life. It's like Jordan Peterson says, make your yeah. fucking bed, first of all. <laughs> Clean your fucking room. If your life sucks, don't sit there and say, someone else who's similar to me has a better life. It's like, bro, fix your fucking life and then get as far as you can. And then you get to decide, okay, you know, my height is working against me or my race is working against me, but max yourself out first. And what I find every single fucking short guy or Asian guy or whatever fucking stupid excuse they use, when they max yeah. themselves out, they go far beyond like 99% of humanity. Yes. Like, do you know how many fucking five foot five guys I've worked with that just get laid like fucking 15 times and they're like, oh my God, I'm literally getting laid more than like my six foot seven friends. Like, like I yeah. win. I win. It's like, yeah, because we're, as, and now, yes, I'd be the first person to say, 
if instead of being five foot five, they were six foot two, instead of getting laid 15 times, they probably would have got laid 30 times. But it's like, who gives a shit? Just talk to twice as many girls and you'll get laid. Like, you know what I mean? Like, who gives a fuck? It's really hard to give a fuck about what you could have had if you fucked 15 or 30 or whatever chicks. Or if you're sitting there with like some girl that's just like the light of your life. She's just like the best person you've ever met in your life. And you have an elite sex life. And, you know, you have a bunch of money. You're not really going to give a fuck that you could have had twice as much money if you weren't Indian. Like, why would you give a shit? Your life is amazing. So, And, and, and that's, the, that's a key point where I think... Um... I think in life it's important to distinguish between, you know, zero sum games or like, you know, hierarchies, you could say, and non zero sum games. Like getting laid. I mean, there's so many women out there. There's so, like, you could talk it's to an infinite number of women. Zero, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, not a zero sum game. If you fuck someone, you're not taking that girl away from me. Cause here's the other thing one girl might <sighs> fuck multiple men. So it's like, it's not really a zero sum game. The tall guys are not taking the lays away from It's like, it's like everyone guys. thinks that, like, you know, Chad's out there. He's, He's fucked everyone. He's fucked your girl. He's fucked your wife. You know, after he's fucked them, she'll never touch you again. That, that, yeah, <laughs> they're never gonna have sex ever again. Never sex again. Like, like <laughs> his cock is. It can never be replaced. <laughs> but um, it's it's. I mean, it, another like a, a comparison is like, look, like if you're an average sized person, you're probably not going to be in the NBA, right? Like, sure. Maybe maybe there's maybe there's some shot. Like maybe you have some other gifts and you can make it work. But it's like, like look, that's not you know. That, that the, the, st- the deck is stacked the deck is stacked against you but something like making money sleeping with girls like m- most things in life are not zero sum like there's enough for everyone you can you know you can all you can create opportunities like yeah like you, you can hit your goals there's nothing stopping you and here's a better example than the nba one because the nba one you just said is a very specific niche tiny example where they only have a certain infl- yeah. a certain number of people who can be in the nba and so it's not like yeah. you can't be in the nba if you're short it's just that there's four million other people that are taller than you who probably get a chance first here's a better yeah. example if you wanted to become an elite athlete yes it doesn't fucking matter how short you are you probably yeah. won't be in the nba i agree so go do fucking shot put or powerlifting or some sport where your yes. low height will actually work for you. Be a fucking horse jockey, you know, like the, the horse racing, right? You'll probably fucking kill it in that sport. And like, like a, a coxswain and crew, you know, like something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, same with girls. If you say I'm short, therefore, if I go outside, none of the girls, it's like, that is such a fucking pathetic way of looking at it because guess what? I'm going to blow your fucking mind here. There are girls shorter than you. No matter what your height is, there are girls shorter than you. Just talk to them. They're, they're, I solved your fucking problem. I remember I yeah. sat down with Ed. I, yeah. I, I did a podcast with him ages and ages and ages ago. He's, he's one of my favorite fucking clients. He yeah. was five foot six. Or he, he still is. He's not dead. God bless him. And so, yeah, he's still five foot six. <laughs> he hasn't shrunk. A lot of cold showers and he still hasn't shrunk. So five foot six, right? Yeah, and I remember on the podcast he'd he'd fucked like fourteen girls or something at that point, th- whatever it was, right? He'd, he he was a virgin when he first fucking saw me, virgin at thirty one. So please stop making dumb excuses, guys. Like I'm too old, I'm a virgin, I'm short. He was all of those fucking things, and so you know I said to him like a lot of guys say that you can't get laid because you're short. So how did you get laid? And he's like, I just talked to girls shorter than me, and I was like, is that <laughs> mind it? blowing? Like, yeah, he's like, yeah, I just talked to short girls, and he's like. That's it. That's it. That's the big amount of fucking wisdom, guys. It's like, just go talk to short girls. Like, done. If you're four <laughs> foot fucking ten, talk to four foot eight girls. Or put or some you, fucking high heels on. You want to hear, <laughs> you want to hear like kind of a silly one, too, is, um, yeah, I mean, this this guy in the forums, he was just totally ripped and, like, is, you know, mm-hmm. sleeping with, like, four girls a week. I kind of had this belief where I'm, one, I saw him just kind of posting and stuff, and I'm like, oh man, this guy's probably like six two to six four, like and ripped, like that makes sense. And I had this idea where I'm just like, if you are not tall, or if you're not at least you know slightly above average, and you get ripped, it doesn't help that much. Yep. Like it's you know Which you kind of look stuck here. The dumbest belief ever. It's yeah. it's the dumbest belief, but like I just hadn't you know, I hadn't met anyone like this person. And then like, after I ha- saw the evidence, I was like, yeah, I was totally fucking wrong. Like, you know, cause how tall is 100%. he again? Uh, said five, eight to five, nine. Yeah. So like below and I'm, I'm average and re- the exact same, uh, exact same window, the, yeah. you're forgetting the other guy in the, in my group coaching, um, who's also ripped. He's yeah. short too. I think he's like uh. five foot nine or something. He's quite short. Uh. Yeah. So yeah. It's like, 
I mean, that's not that's not crazy short. A lot of guys would be like, that's taller than me. So, but the point is, he's not like fucking massive. Yeah, and no, like, totally. He maxed himself out. He has a good body. He actually fucking tries, and he's had sex with as many women as me. That yeah. guy's had, that guy in particular has had sex with over a hundred women. So it's like, how do you do that? I thought short guys can't get laid. It's like, no, just fucking try. That's it. So let's segue. Enough about short guys. Yeah. Enough shitting on short guys. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about <laughs> the importance of guys going all in and pushing themselves. We yeah. kind of touched on it before. That's the reason that you've been successful. And, you know, we've, we've glossed over mm. a lot of your successes. We've just read the highlight reels. There was a lot of behind the scenes work that you and I did. We did a lot of counseling. We did a lot of like digging through some of your other things, like working on your issue of not being able to come with girls. You know, yeah. we, did, we did a bunch of work in that, learning how to figure out what kind of girls you wanted, you know, all yeah. that kind of stuff. So- all of the changes that you made, mm -hmm. especially the sexy headline changes, like, you know, fucking three girls, having two fuck buddies at once, coming on girls' faces, all that kind of shit. Yeah. I, I, I really want to drill it in that, yes, I helped. Obviously, I fucking helped. You would be yeah. the first person to say that, but you worked your fucking ass off. Like, you really did. I felt like your guide, and I felt like you were hungry for victory, and you pushed yourself like crazy. And I really yeah. want to drill it into people that no coach – including me, no coach is just going to be a perfect panacea where you can just come and not really want success. And we can just like go like snap, snap the fingers. Okay. Now you're going to be successful. Like you have to want it. You yeah. have to be willing to do what I tell you. If you don't mm. do the fucking homework, it won't fucking work. And there are plenty of times where all the coaching in the world can't get you over a certain hurdle. It has to be you. Like when you're yeah. out there talking to girls and a girl rejects you and you want to go mm. home, you want to run home and cry, but you think, no, I, I have a choice to make. Either I go home and, and fucking quit or I go out and talk to five more girls right now. That's you making that decision. That has nothing to do with me. Obviously, you can post in the group coaching. You know, we have a Facebook group. You can post in there and I'll answer as soon as I possibly can. But the, but the, you're still the one doing it. And I really want to yeah. drill into people that like you have to be the one to make these changes. Because I, I sometimes I will get someone that will sit down on a call with me and say, Andy, I want to do coaching with you. Mm. I don't think I can, I don't think I can change like myself. I, you know, I don't believe I can. Can you make me change? And I really drill it into people like, I can help you. I can yeah. push you. I can nag you. I can coach you. I can counsel yeah. you. We can go balls deep on everything you want to, but like, you have to be the one to do this shit. Yeah. And you use the word a lot, which I think is, it's a really good word is like, you give people permission. Like, yeah. There was a lot of things where, I'm just like, I would never do this, but like, there's a certain comfort and just like, okay, like Andy has kind of given me the green light. I know he's done this himself. Like I, I, I trust him and like, I would do it. And like, yeah, it like works great. Like just like the funniest stuff. Like I was like, what? I was like <laughs> going like openly just talking to girls and be like, these are all my, this is my sexual bucket list. I want to do all this like kicking yeah. shit. I'm like, Fuck, if I had not been Andy, I would never have just like... Well, being honest, like directly for you, like you're an yeah. honest guy, but I mean like being honest with like, yo, I'm going to see other girls. Are you okay with that? I want this to be casual, but ongoing. Like I'm not looking yeah. for a relationship. It, it, it's The word you use is perfect. I think that is what I'm doing for the most part. I'm just literally giving you permission. I'm saying, yeah. look, I promise you it will work out. I promise you whatever fears you have won't come true. And yeah. even if they do, you'll be fine. And you'll go and talk to the next girl and she will handle it better. I really am just giving you permission and also a promise that it will work out based on my own evidence, all the clients I've worked with, all my fucking friends, everyone on my front. It's like, it's, it's very heavily backed in evidence, but there is a part of like you obviously, and you're yeah. someone that argued, but there will be a part of everyone who comes to me who says like, but I just don't know if it will work. And it's like, yeah, but you're the newbie. You don't know what's fucking possible. You do need to like, to some extent, take a leap of faith and trust in your trust that, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about because you're a newbie by definition or you're not the yeah. experienced one. You're coming to a coach. You need to trust in what the coach is saying. And, you know, a big part of what I do is just like, no, I promise this will work. Just do it. And you do it and you come back and everyone comes back, dude, like, just like you. And they're like, oh my God, Andy, I was honest with the girl and she was honest back and we just, we talked about it and then we're going to be casual fuck buddies and there's no drama and it's great. And she said like, we can talk about our sexual fucking bucket list and she sucked my dick and she called me daddy and like all this kind of shit. And it's like, all I really did was just say, you're allowed to do that. And for the first time ever, you tried, you tried being honest, you tried being kinky, you tried being open and you tried hitting on chicks. I feel like that's what my coaching is in a nutshell. It's like, 
Just go try. Daddy gives you permission. Daddy Andy gives you permission. <laughs> I think what's the thing too about permission as well is like part of it is as you start to make these changes and you see the evolution of how you like grow and develop, you start to give yourself more permission. Like a simple yeah. one it was like the changes from radical started to make a big difference. Like as in the style so, changes. The style. style. It was so funny to me how simple some of them were. Like, I mean, I'll give you a few basic examples. Like getting getting this necklace here um getting like a, a bracelet getting like black jeans and kind of just like rocking like an all black look with white sneakers yeah. or like you improved you know, your looks a lot you improved your fashion yeah. and your style a lot yeah i was literally yeah i was like walking the other day uh i mean this guy like he's like a street vendor or some shit he's like trying to stop me but he's like oh dude like i, I dig your look you're like a model or something and i was like nah just, just worked with radical you know like fuck <laughs> but uh yeah it's kind of like you just even just getting a fucking like a silver necklace people treat you differently even though like yeah the, even though like the friend the guy friends i had they're like dude that's fucking cool like you look like yep. a different person it's like and yeah, you know why so simple because as soon as you improve your style and by the way we're not talking about like you don't have to become a fucking stylish amazing you will but you don't have yeah. to that that's not what you're doing in your head what you need to phrase it as is i'll just buy a ring or two and try that or i'll just i'll try a nice bracelet i'll maybe i'll add in a watch as well yeah. A couple of days later, maybe I will try buying a nice necklace and see a, a, a fucking pendant or whatever. Like yeah. you don't have to overhaul your whole style at once. Yeah. But when you do that, what you're doing is giving yourself permission to look like you actually try. You're giving yourself permission to try. And so what people are picking up on is all of a sudden he takes himself seriously. He actually gives a fuck about his appearance. And that's what they're commenting on. It's not yeah. just that you're wearing a cool necklace. It's like, oh, dude, you look like you take yourself seriously. You look like, yes. you, actually, like you actually care. And when you take yourself seriously, I did a podcast yeah. called, if you don't take yourself seriously, why should anybody else? Yeah. But as soon as you start like, I, okay, I'm going to dress decently. When I leave the house, I'm going to fucking groom myself. I'm going to shave my beard or I'm going to trim, like, like style my beard. As soon as you yeah. do that, people are like, oh, he put in effort. Therefore, I should respect him. Your hind brain goes, this person cares about themselves, so I should respect them. If you walk out in track pants and, you know, a fucking old sweater and you look like trash, why would yeah. anyone take you seriously or be like all that nice to you? They're going to be yeah. like the bare minimum nice, but they're not going to go above and beyond because you don't look so like true. you take yourself seriously. So why should they? Yeah, it's so true. And it's it's a simple thing as well. We're just talking um talking to radical. Like he's he's like, yeah, literally like even just like wearing more <laughs> kind of more monochromatic, more black, like things like that. It just kind of creates a bit of an edgier impression. Yeah. And it's so simple. And he's just like, dude, just avoid a few simple things. Like I know he's not big on uh he doesn't like plaid. He's like plaid's kind of boyfriendy. It kind of feels like very like, you know, like your fall, you're going to a pumpkin patch or something. He's like just burn all your fucking black shit um and just a few tips and i'm like dude this was so much easier than i thought it was like this yeah. is so much good like a f like five to seven style changes you could say could mm -hmm. totally transform the way that people look at you and the way that you, and you, you think about you, you look transformed at yourself. a lot you did yeah like, i remember the way you looked in the first week versus like a couple weeks later yeah it's like yeah no it makes such a fucking difference it really is just about you don't even have to max your looks out. Again, like you, your looks are not maxed out. You'd be the first person to admit that. Neither am I. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still working on it. Yeah. It looks like you actually give a shit. Yeah. And that's 100%. all that really matters. Like girls are just, th this is the best style advice that I ever give anyone. I say, just look like you actually tried. Look like, or yeah. another way of phrasing that is look like you actually give a shit. Look like you, yeah. you take yourself semi-seriously. That's it. That in itself is the best philosophy of style or fashion. It's like, just look like you actually put in some fucking effort. <laughs> and it's then people pick do. up on that they're like he put yeah. in effort i'll put in effort i'll sleep with him because he puts in effort i should respect him because he, he he takes himself seriously so, a difference in in general terms not just style i mean you can do yeah. a style one if you want to but if a newbie comes to you or a newbie is listening and when we say a newbie we mean maybe a guy who's not happy with his sex life or where he yeah. is any goal in general but let's just focus in on like getting laid so yeah. if a guy is listening to this and maybe he wants to get laid more or he wants a girlfriend or whatever what one or two pieces of advice would you say to that guy? A guy who's just starting out, doesn't really know what he's doing. Maybe he's read some of my articles. What helped? Oh, that's a, that is a great question. Um, I would say, oh man, there's like so many, so many tips I could give here. Um, I'd say one, and I'm trying to think of this as whether like one tip or two, but I'll just start here. Maybe I can split this into two tips. Mm -hmm. 
but I would say kind of trust the process um, and maybe like have a system would be the way I would think about it. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you always talk about how it's a numbers game. You know, like you do have to talk to a certain number of girls and all this stuff and really like internalizing that mindset of like, okay, I'm going to consistently talk to like X number of girls a week. I'm going to send out X number of messages a week on online dating. Um, I'm really, you know, I'm going to go, it's like sales in a way. Like I got, I got to get out there, got to build a pipeline. I need to really like put myself out there. And if it's not working, make some tweaks, get back out there, keep like, you know, putting out the messages. Um, I think too many people, they they just like, oh, you know, I, I, I messaged five girls and I got no response. Like it doesn't work. And it's like, yeah, dude, I, we're I, talking. I, I, try, I tried for one day and it didn't work. Therefore it doesn't work. It's all a scam. Yeah. Yeah. No, seriously. It, it's like, Literally, like if it, it probably would be, if you came from a sales background, you would instantly get it. You're like, I need a pipeline, you know, yeah. there's, there's yeah. different stages here. Like I need to, if I send out a certain number of messages, I'll get a certain number of dates. There is a way to have a kind of a repeatable system here. Um, and, and, you know, I just, the fact that you stick to that and you know that if you like are consistent with it, the results will come, um, yeah. I think is a really critical insight. And probably two is just, one, I think is, all right, so, so two, I think a part of it is like the value of the support system and the support network. And I think part of that is maybe this idea of like surrender. Um, and I, I use the term surrender as in like, you're just like, I am going to trusting do what these it. people tell me, trusting it. You're like, I will do what these people tell me. I'll do what Andy tells me to do. I don't know. Place. Um, me not knowing what I'm doing, like, uh, you know, I, I my, I, my perception of, is of someone who does not get laid. I am just going to just trust guys who do and just say like, I will do, tell me, and I will like, you know, I, I will give this a fair shot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just a simple example is um, talking to girls during the day. So many people that first day, they're like, I, I went out for like four hours and I could barely talk to anyone. I was thinking about it. And I like, you know, I was about to pee my pants. Like I could bear, even the thought of approaching was like too much to handle. And like, maybe on your own, you're like, yeah, I'm just not cut out for this, but you have the group and they're like, yeah, that's how day one is. Like, yeah. Yeah. The, it's like, like you need he, other people who've been through it before who can say like, no, mate, you're on the right path. Just, just keep going. Yeah. It, it's like, like a, like a re like they're reinforcing the, the process. You've been given a process. Like I say, go do this, but you, you're going to have doubts. Of course you are. You can yeah, or maybe, in the guide and have doubts, but. Yeah, or maybe you've talked to 10. Like some of them, like I, I've hit on 10 girls now. I'm still like nervous as shit. Like I still feel like I'm not cut out for this. And you're like, I've been there. Still not yeah. enough. Like keep, keep Dude, talking to more. I was nervous more. until like my 60th go. Yeah, no, 100%. So it's like that confidence and that trust of like, I know these guys are legit. I know they've done it. I know they know more than I do. I'm just going to listen and do it. I'm like kind of just listen to execute, like follow the marching orders. Um I think that's really critical um, as well. And I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's kind of baked into one and two, but just like maybe number three is just like, don't give up and be committed, like yeah. be committed to the goal and don't give up. Like this, it, I think it all fits together. Like trust the process, have a, have a good support community, but like know that if you stick with it long enough and you are consistent, like there's zero chance, you will succeed. You will hundred yeah. percent succeed. Um, it's just, it, you know, put in the, put in the reps and you'll get there. Yeah. You know, from my point of view, I'm obviously in a really like cool position where it's like, I get a very top down position. I, I see, I've seen like thousands of people at this point in time across my forums, good looking loser forums. I'm a moderator on the good looking loser forum. So I've seen yeah. so many people and I've worked with like, I think I'm well over the hundred client point at this point over the last like, you know, three years I've seen so many people come and go and I've seen people successful and people who are not and people from all different backgrounds and walks of life. And, you know, if you say to me, is there a pattern between people? Is there a certain pattern that everyone who's successful, like they're all, you know, they all fit within that same pattern. Is there a pattern of people who don't succeed? And it's like, you know what the only fucking thing is? You, it's nothing to do with IQ. It's not height. It's not race. It's not uh, how serious they are. It's not, how impulsive they are it's not even how much action they take it's not huh. even that it's yeah. it's literally none of that the only thing that matters is that they don't quit that's it that's it nothing else i love matters. that that's such i good. have that's so, so cool. many and it seems so fucking like 
obvious that you mm. will succeed if you just don't quit. But yeah, I have seen so many clients. I've worked with so many clients. I can name some and I, I won't name them, but one of them is going to know exactly who I'm talking about. If he watches this, one of my longest term clients is yeah. the definition of not taking a fuck ton of action all at once. Now he's not lazy. Yeah. He takes yeah. action, but he is the king of like baby steps. He's like the tortoise you know, when they're saying the, the sorry, the story, the tortoise and the hare, he's the fucking tortoise. He's always been the tortoise. I remember early on, we had conversations where it's like, I'm not you, Andy. Like, I, I can't just, I'm not impulsive. And I was like, it doesn't fucking matter, dude, just don't quit. Because while everyone else is, you know, all the hares are busting their asses and, you know, doing all this crazy shit and then burning out, or maybe they go off the rails for a little bit and they come back and all of this, you're just like on that grind, like consistently, and you will overtake them because you don't fucking quit. I know this guy, he's, and I'm correct. Like I've known him for three years. He's not capable of quitting. I even said, I talked yeah. about him on a podcast one time and I said, you know, if someone said to him, you have to stop working on your goals or I'll kill you. And they put a gun to his head. I know him. He'd A tear would fall down his eye and he'd go, he'd go, well, I guess you have to kill me then. Like, cause he's not capable of quitting. Like he would li and he, he, I said that on a podcast, he listened to that and he was like, yeah, that's actually correct. Like I would have to die before I would quit. And so He's the perfect definition of, or the perfect example of, just don't quit. <laughs> and yeah. like, and this is a guy that's banged like a ton of women at this point, and it's just like, come on, just, just don't fucking quit. It, no. Nothing yeah. else matters. Nothing else matters. Don't quit. No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm definitely like that as well. And I feel like I am someone where, like, you know, maybe, maybe like there's something I need to take a break from a goal. Maybe it's like I, I hit sure. this roadblock all this, but That's like different. We're talking about quitting fuck. and never coming back. No, exactly. I'm like, I just, it eats at me. I'm like, I will yeah. be back and I will make this work. And I will, I, I will not, <laughs> I'll either die or I will like succeed doing this. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that, yeah, that's, that's so true. It's, it's, it's like an article I was reading um, at one point on startups, they were literally talking about like, one of the most important things for a startup founder, if not the most important, is just to stay alive. Like, yeah, make, yeah. like just manage your, your first yeah. couple of years. Yeah. No, yeah. Manage your cash, run mm -hmm. intelligent business. Like, don't take any like, like really stupid risks. It's like stay in the game because you will figure it out. Yes. And if you don't, yes. uh, if you, if you like run out of cash, the game is over. I and say I think the same it's, for I think like advice. YouTubers and content creators and shit. It's like, I mean, look at my fucking content. It's like, it's been a really slow grind, but just don't quit. And here I am three years later. It's like, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. But it's like, if I just don't quit, I know that even if it takes 10 fucking years from now, I'll get to 100,000 YouTube subscribers. Even if it takes 20 years, I'll just wait 20 years. And there will be a bunch of people that could have gone beyond that and would have gone beyond that in a shorter period of time. But they quit after six months when they didn't hit 100,000 subscribers in six months or some insane metric that they had in their head. They'll be like, wow, the YouTube grind sucks at the start. I'm only getting like one extra subscriber every day. This fucking sucks. It's like, yeah, but just qu don't quit and you will eventually, it'll be fucking like, you know, a logarithmic sort of scale, exponential. You'll just absolutely fucking hit the stratosphere if you don't quit. If you quit, you're never giving yourself that chance. It, yeah, and I, I think a key part of believing that as well, to like to, to truly internalize the value of that, at least for me. I'd even just, say you don't even have to believe it. Just shut the fuck up and don't quit. Just, just, yeah, exactly. I, I mean, <laughs> I don't I, care if you believe even... it or not. I don't care if you believe you're going to make it. I didn't believe I was going to make it for most of what I've done. I've, yeah. I, you know, I have that article. I am always full of doubt. And as I said yeah. in that article, I didn't believe I was going to get laid. You think I thought I would even get laid? No, I was like obese. I had been in like nine years worth of abusive, horrible, toxic, shitty relationship. Why the fuck would I ever think I would get laid? But I was like, well, I, I guess I just have to try. And I'll, I don't think it'll work, but I'm not going to quit. Same as my website. I didn't think anyone yeah. would read it. I didn't think my coaching would work. I didn't think I'd ever be able to pay the bills from coaching, but I just, I, I knew I couldn't quit. I literally thought I'm going to become homeless from this stupid fucking coaching business. But I was like, <laughs> I'll just work on my laptop from the library and literally sleep on a park bench or I'll move back in with my parents, even though they live across the other side of the country, I'll have to swallow my pride and do that. Like I wasn't going to quit. And so I didn't even believe I was going to be successful, but it doesn't fucking matter. Half but, my clients but, but, don't think they'll get laid. And then their, their dick is in a pussy and they're like, I'm not supposed to be getting laid right now. It's like, it doesn't matter. Just don't quit. It's so, true. That's, it's so funny. Who would have thought like you make a, a killer living helping guys figure out their coming problems and uh, get yeah. <laughs> speak for yourself. Everybody else can. I mean, we didn't even talk about that much, and maybe that can be a future yeah. episode. But yeah, we maybe. were going to talk about you not being able to come. So we'll yeah. save that 
special for next if we ever do another podcast maybe i'll do a podcast by myself i once had this client who couldn't come and (laughs) i helped him come i wanted this boy to come so i i got in there and you're like i I doubt it i doubt it i could make him come but uh you know i I stuck with it i didn't quit here there he is for sure what do you think you'd be if you hadn't taken the plunge to go all in Uh, that's a good question um i think that for me I think I probably would have ended up just, you know, in a normal relationship and it would have been, you know, probably with a, a cute girl, it would have been fine. Like, you know, have sex every once in a while and all this stuff. But like, I definitely would not have had the confidence I could get laid. I would not feel as in control in the relationship. I probably wouldn't find the right, the person who's truly right for me in so many ways. Yeah. Like, I think that, um, yeah, I would, I would definitely in, in some respects, like settle for someone who's just not ideal. And now I really feel like I'm, I'm just in control. Like I know what I'm looking for. I know how to find it. I kind of like know how to really like look for the right type of person. And uh, whenever I do end up settling down or, you know, whatever I ultimately the type of relationship I end up getting, I'm confident that it'll be something I really like I want. I'm not going to compromise on it. That makes me really happy. And you know what will make like what will make someone else really happy, whichever girl you settle down with. Yeah. Assuming you settle down, who knows if you do, yeah, but yeah. like, if you do settle down with a girl, she's going to know and you'll be able to look her in the eyes and tell her like, I ch- I'm choosing to settle down with you. I'm not like settling into this from complacency or because I don't think I can get anyone else or because you're the first person that was nice to me or because I don't have any other options or because it just kind of happened from luck. It's like, no, I, I hit on you. I sought you out. I was dating multiple girls and I decided you were the best one. Yeah. I had a checklist of like, you know, what kind of woman I, I like, the qualities I like. I have principles. You and I did a lot of coaching sessions or we went pretty deep in a couple of coaching sessions on the principles that are important to you and what principles yeah. and ethics and morals you'd want in a woman. And so yeah. when you do, like if you do settle down with a woman, you'll know that and she'll be able to know that like I chose you. That's one of the things that I can say to Imogen. I've said it to her many times. I've said like, I've fucked like a hundred and whatever it is, 150 chicks. I, I don't know. I've lost count, but like whatever it is, a <laughs> hundred and something chicks. And you are above and beyond the best that I've ever met, like above and beyond the best. And so yeah. there's not any fucking doubt in my mind. It's like, could I go and find a replacement? Sure. But do I want to go and fuck 50 f- fucking more girls to find her? It's like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Thanks. It's like, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. And so, so I get to say that to her and that's a nice thing. And you're, if you do settle down, that person or that girl is going to know like, oh, like genuinely he's coming from a place of like abundance and self-love and he's picking me because he likes his life and he thinks I would be a good addition to it rather yes. than because he has some void in his life and he's lonely and he just wants, which is what most people do, which is what yeah. we're really talking about here. This is why I fucking coach guys on this stuff. It's not just because I want your dick to get wet. I don't give a fuck if your dick gets wet. I want you to have a fucking happy life. And I want you to know that the women you're with and the people you spend your time with and the people you give your love and affection and your sexual energy and all that too, you're choosing to. It's not yes. just like whoa, it happened to be the first girl that came along. So I, I didn't have a fucking choice. It's like, what is that? That's like entrapment. That's like some sort of prison sentence. Imagine being totally. with a woman for the rest of your life because you felt like you didn't have another option. Fuck that. What are you going to do when you do meet another? What if what if some hotter girl walks past one day or you have a secretary? This is why people cheat because yeah. it's like they just settled with the, the first fucking person and then someone better is right there and they're like, God damn it, I've made a terrible mistake. And it's like, well, that's not fucking fair on you or your fucking partner. Like, why have you done that? Yeah, and I would say, too, just from from working with you and just in some ways kind of the uh, the changes that you have to your personality and kind of who you are as a person from doing this kind of work, like, girls started just responding to me really differently, honestly. Yeah. Like, I thought the, the one I thought was, like, funny, but, like, kind of just – it blew my mind was, yeah, this one girl I was I was sleeping with consistently – I was like one time and she's like she's like oh she's like you're so hot I can't believe you're inside me like she's like it was like blew her mind she was like fucking losing it um and she too would like come like a million times from sex and she's like I only do like I literally like I'm not like that with other people like you it's like a special thing and I just thought that was like kind of crazy to me like I don't know it's like it never hurts to have some extra validation right oh for sure dude for sure yeah. So if someone's on the fence about doing coaching with me, 
Yeah. And going all in, I guess we can say, and not being a fucking pussy and deciding to actually fucking work on their goals. What yeah. advice would you give them if they're sitting there on the fence going, I don't know, I'm scared. I don't know if it'll work. I don't know if I can change. I don't know if I can get laid. Just do it. <laughs> Just fucking do it. That's, such, mean, a, that's such the cop-out answer. That's like the best. But that's no, answer, right? I mean, like, I know I would, I, no, so like in a more serious note, um, I would say this. I mean, I, people use, use the phrase a lot. I think, you know, as far as we know, you only have one life to live. And yeah, I think that, people look at the price tag of something and I think that people just psych themselves out. I think in some ways conditioning all oh, like, you know, this costs this much, this costs that much, but really like the intangibles, like the, the difference in your life and your personality and like the trajectory of who you could be and who you could become for like actually knowing how to relate to women, how to get laid, like how to like what the, the ways that it shapes you as a person are so so powerful it's like literally every area of your life is going to get yeah. so much better every just because of this of your personality every facet of your personality um and i mean i've said i said this to you before too andy it's like where else can you get this insight from where else are you going to find a guy who like has had this much experience who has thought through these things so deeply who's kind of just committed to helping guys out and who you know, has no difficulty broaching kind of sensitive subjects to really make you hit your goals. Like, where else? Like, you, you know, you're not going to get this from some like online, you know, e- ebook or something, or like some some even these in person group boot camps. You're not going to get this. Like, you can fix problems. You can sort out your life. You can get better in so many ways just from working with you. That there's virtually zero other opportunities to do. And I think in that way, it's, it's, um, it's an opportunity people should jump at. Yeah. You know, what makes me like genuinely sad. And it's something that I think I need to get over. Like being, I'll be real from him. I think I do. Gen- yeah. It is something I want to work on. Yeah. Is when I sit down with someone to decide if we're going to do coaching and, and they don't want to go ahead for whatever reason. Yeah. And I'll, I'll try and, you know, I'm not a big salesperson. I don't really like doing that because ultimately, like, I believe in screening. If you don't want to work with me, you don't want to work with me. But yeah. there is a part of me that's like, I just want to grab them and be like, mate, this is the rest of your fucking life here. Especially the guys that are like, I've been depressed for like five years or I'm a virgin or I haven't had sex in like nine years or whatever. And it's like, mate, if you just let me fucking help you. Yes. I can like, I'm not saying I will fix you and make your life perfectly, but it's like, Jesus fucking Christ, I can fix the like five things that are really have been depressing you for the last five years. Just give me fucking 12 weeks. Hell, I'll get it done in the first eight of those 12 weeks. Like, just let me fucking help you. And I will sometimes even just say that. I'll just be like, mate, just let me fucking help you, dude. Like, you're sitting yeah. here telling me how depressed you are. You've wrote all this shit. You've wrote like 50 paragraphs about how depressed you are. We sat here for an hour talking about how much you want this. And now yeah. when it comes time to let's do this, you're like, I don't know if I can, man. I just, I don't know if, for whatever, like stupid, dumb, it's always dumb reasons too. It's like, now's not yeah. the right time. I don't have that money. I can't get that money. And, and I could get the money, but you know, I just, I want to feel secure with the amount of money that I have in my bank account. You know, what if something, uh, if I give you that money, what if something was to happen if I get a medical injury and I, it's like just <laughs> weird fucking like excuses, which are all boiled down to you're scared. And it's, I think I let it bother me too much. Cause I'm yeah. like, I know this guy is now going to go away and for the next Mm. six months or the Mm. next year, he's going to be depressed. And yeah, I don't lose sleep over that, but there is a part of me that's just like, for fuck's sakes, like you could have chosen to make your life infinitely better. And my life would be better too, because I get to fucking help you with that. And that makes me feel fucking good. And instead you've chosen to make me momentarily sad for you and you sad for the next six months or 12, like who knows, maybe the rest of your fucking life, if you really don't get your shit together. And it's just like, ah, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to like put my hand through the fucking monitor and saying like, dude, like I've said to people, like you're literally prioritizing a couple thousand, especially the group coaching, which is not even that fucking expensive. You're prioritizing a couple thousand dollars instead of the rest of your fucking life. Like where are your fucking priorities? So this this really gets me fired up, man. Cause it's like, I know you're going to go away and be sad for the rest of your, for however long it's like, why, why did you choose that? You chose to be sad. Why? I can I can totally relate to that. Yeah, there's certain th- certain parts of my life that maybe I'm, you know, maybe like I'm interviewing someone for, my, for like a job, and like 
it's between you know working with us or like working some like generic fucking you know shitty. maybe maybe it's you know it's us or it's even like a, a fairly like big brand name company but i you know i know the company and like you're just going to be you know they're like pushing Employee keystrokes number all day 4, yeah yeah there it's going to be super generic like you'll get paid you know x number of dollars but that's never really going to go up like you're just going to leave live like a boring normal like stable life but i'm like look like everything you've told me about what you want that you actually like want to do something bigger that yeah. you're serious that you like want to actually like do stimulating work that makes a difference like we can get you there like please say yes and if they say no it's like so disheartening it's yeah. it's really uh but i i don't know i don't know what your experience has been i mean i know that you are talking to some people who who really have a lot of walls up and like they're very resistant i have found for me when i when i have that like conviction and i just like i like really i'm just like really really like out there about it i'm like i want to help you please 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 can i help you like let's make this happen like it works very frequently like i find people just like they feel oh, sure. it like they yeah. know they're like wow this is i i felt something on that like you know that this person really like does want to help me out here and yeah that it, it can get someone who's on the fence to do something they never otherwise do right Sure. I still at the, I, I still find this, I, I struggle to find a balance between that, like that yeah. passion that like, look, let me just fucking help you versus I do only have a limited amount of time and energy in my yeah. life. And maybe I, you know, my girlfriend Imogen put this to me. She's like, if you try that hard, aren't you rewarding people who weren't that serious? Like, don't you want to reward people who are a bit more serious? And so I, I'm struggling to like, put those two ideas together or find a balance between those two between not trying like crazy hard on someone who maybe they're directly telling you like you shouldn't try that hard on me because i'm not that serious versus yeah. like not giving up on people too early so it's it's a balance that i'm still sort of struggling to find i'll find it one day i'm sure i think yeah. i will uh, more on the side of of not going crazy hard with those people i suspect eventually you get to a point where you just have too many inquiries anyway that you're yeah. like I already screen like fucking crazy. As you know, to get people even on a call with me, it's like you have to fill out a questionnaire and watch videos and then we do a call together. But I suspect that'll get even more over time. And if someone is hesitant, I'll just say like, nah, like, you know, keep me up. It is tough. I mean, it's, a year from now, but yeah. Yeah. And it's the thing of sometimes maybe you push someone over the edge and you get them, you know, to, to pay you and stuff, but like, they're just not ready to take action and you can't help someone who doesn't want to help themselves. Right. It's like, maybe when the time is right, they come back and they're like, it's been four years, Andy. I still haven't gotten laid. Like, happily go now, and you're like, let's do this. But yeah. um, it's a hard thing in the world. That yeah, sometimes uh, people aren't ready. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think not being ready is the perfect way to phrase that. Speaking of ready, are you yeah. ready to finish up? I don't care if you say yes or no. We are finishing up. But is there anything you'd like? To, <laughs> is, there, is there any? <laughs> yeah. Is there anything you would like to shout out? Anything? Anyone? Anyhow? Any who? Shout out your favorite. Character. Uh, shout out your company <laughs> shout out shout out your name and your social security and your address if you'd like and your business yeah just give give my bank account number uh on this uh, <laughs> yeah i mean I, I would just say this has yeah i mean genuinely been like just such an amazing experience yeah and i know i've said that but part of it too again it's just this is just my take on things but really having your kind of worldview and what you think is possible and like you know your limits kind of shattered in such an intense way in 12 weeks like really seeing how much more is out there in the world uh one is you know it it, it bleeds over to the rest of your life you really uh see the potential and the power and like you're, you're like okay i was you know i made a quantum leap here think of all the leaps i can make elsewhere but it's it's just this really like inspiring powerful thing as well um you just you know see the world in a much more uh, meaningful and more impactful way and um like i said yeah you just become a better person because of it so thank you you andy and uh kill your inner no. group and everyone i mean it's it's been quite the journey no man um thank you like you worked your no. fucking ass off it was really fun to work with you it really was an honor and that's not me just saying something nice it really was fucking fun to work with you so thank you and everyone no else problem. if you want coaching you know i'll leave a link in the description and all that good shit but thanks for tuning in guys thank you for joining me thank you for all that good shit and go out and crush your fucking goals you pussies don't hold back <laughs> thank you Andy. thank you Andy.
Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy.